So many things these days are way overhyped, or to use the YouTube term, clickbait. Turns out a total solar eclipse is not one of those things. But let's start this day back at the beginning. What is up, everybody? Today is the day of the total solar eclipse where I live. It'll be total here in Akron, but I think we're gonna ride the towpath up to Cleveland. And I kinda wanna see just a lot of people and what's going on. Everyone's predicting all this chaos and just crowds. And I, as a photographer and videographer, wanna take pictures of it. So I was originally thinking I was just gonna ride the gunner because it's what I've been riding and it's all set up and ready to go. But um, I thought I'd throw the front rack on and my panniers to have room to carry stuff, food, supplies. But realized I don't want to throw the rack on yet. Got a mountain bike trip coming up. I want to hold off till bike packing season to set this up that way and kind of keep it more in mountain bike mode. So I think I'm going to ride my rally because I like to jack the rack and having the big bag on the front the way it's set up now. But I got a flat tire, so I got to change that out. And as you can see, it's a dirty mess. So I want to clean it up a little bit. So. And the fender fits on here with the rear bag and it rained last night. So that's the plan. Going to get this ready to go. And then we are 50% cloud. So hopefully we get to see an eclipse. A little, a little pretty common knowledge tip, but probably something I didn't know when I was younger. So I'll throw it out there. Uh, when you have a flat, you know, I came out to my bike and it was just flat the next day. Always inspecting the tire to make sure there's not something sharp still in there because I'm running this tube right now. So uh, you don't just put another tube in there and get a, another flat instantly. So just feeling around, checking the rim strip, just making sure, you know, see if I could find the culprit basically. And then if you have a cat, you could use them to help inspect the tube. Um, they're very good at finding punctures. <laughs> My helper's back. People always ask me about my tires. I run the 44 Renair Snobbies on my gravel bike, and I run the 55s on the Gunner, both the standard casing. I think what I'm gonna do when I get new tires, get the Rally set up tubeless again with the same tires, but I think this bike will get endurance casing tires. Um, just that I now choose the Gunner when we're doing the more gnarly stuff and I mountain bike on it, I have not had any luck with tubeless, and I have really trashed these tires um, from like the New England riding and mountain biking, nutmeg, all that stuff. So uh, I love the way these tires ride. I would like to get the extra light casing because I would love the way those ride, but it's just not practical for the dumb stuff we do, the industrial gravel and all that. So, yep, I'll be switching those out. Um, might as well clean this up once off the bike. Even though the towpath is going to be a total mess, and it'll be completely dirty again. So this bike is a complete mess right now, but I'm not taking it out for a wash. I'm trying to clean and lube the moving parts. And like I said, it's gonna be filthy again almost instantly, but at least give myself uh, a little chance at some protection. Quick brake adjustment on the Grotex too, Grotex. Yeah, it's actually the inner pad that needs to be moved a bit. Much better. So I'm not totally obsessed with capturing photos of the eclipse, but I do want to be prepared. I would go crazy without my camera and the right tools. So I'm bringing a few things and this is what it is. So my Canon R5 and I have on it the 16 to 35 F2.8 lens. I'm bringing my 70 to 200, and for that I have a couple filters I could stack if I do want to try and get a picture of the sun. I didn't buy an expensive solar filter. You're supposed to need 16 stops to take a long photo of the sun. I'm not bringing a tripod. I have 12 stops here and another three here, so that gets me to the 16 stops. Oh, here's the glasses. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it and the GoPro. 
I take pictures with the sun in it all the time. I know everyone's warning you not to just point your camera at the sun, not to just point your iPhone at the sun. Obviously, don't just leave something pointed at the sun, but to take quick photos of the sun does not ruin your camera or your iPhone. It's if you set it on a tripod and just had it staring at it without any ND filters on. Anyways, this is what we're bringing. I'll be bringing the rain jacket as my extra layer just in case we might not see anything. So. All right, here we go. Solar Eclipse, ride 24. So I do feel like I packed a lot, but I really don't know what's gonna happen and how late I'm gonna be out today. It might be end of the evening, so. Got a rain jacket, got extra socks, all the camera gear I mentioned. I'm wearing maybe an extra layer right now. It said 52, but it already feels warmer than that, so. But again, I might need it tonight, especially if I get wet. I also did the smart thing of when I got up this morning, I'm like, get everything ready for the ride. And then if you have extra time, do some work. I left right on time and getting nothing else done except getting ready for the ride. So it's one of my things this year is, hey, you have to leave for something at this time. Get all the things you need ready now and then work until it's time to leave or pick up or watch YouTube, whatever it may be. A little bit of sunshine. That's all we need is a little bit. So first up, I am meeting Ben and Aaron, the Aaron with the crust. That's our joke because both Aarons have crusts. But the male Aaron <laughs> down at the dog park trailhead. Then we are meeting my girlfriend Aaron in Peninsula and Brad and Ames. It sounds like everybody else bailed on the ride. So who knows? And maybe we'll make some friends along the way. Perfect timing, 10.09, supposed to be there at 10.10. All I have to do is bomb this hill. So living in Northeast Ohio, I really had no expectations for this day. It's often cloudy, especially in April. And as a matter of fact, it has rained every day since. It's gray and cloudy and rainy outside right now as I speak. So even though every city, every organization, Every museum was getting so hyped and pumping up this event, I just didn't allow it to get to me. In fact, we didn't even come up with a plan for what we were gonna do until the night before. So what's your favorite part of Eclipses? Uh, Eclipses aren't real. <laughs> so what blocks the sun? Uh, the, huh? On Sunday night, Brad and Ames had messaged a few of us saying that they were thinking of riding to Ames' sister up in Lakewood. So I messaged Ben. Ben was into riding up to Cleveland. A few other people were. Aaron was like, yeah, I'll go a little ways. We'll see what happens. You know, I don't want to be in like crazy big crowds or anything like that. So we all just kind of were like, hey, let's get together and ride. Everyone just kind of decided to take the day off. A lot of the schools were closed around here. A lot of people got out of work. So it kind of became a three-day weekend for the most part. So meeting at this little coffee shop in Peninsula, Ames and Brad and Aaron was turned out to be perfect. Had some espresso and a chance to have a sandwich. Um, again, thinking that everything in Cleveland would just be absolutely slammed. I had brought some ride snacks, but I'm really glad that I did eat something while we were here. It was 11 o'clock. Sunny as can be. 14 miles in. How far are you in, babe? 6.1. 6 6.1, 6 it's close. At the coffee shop, we had already ditched a couple layers. As you can see, this is already just turning into a glorious day. Not at all what was predicted. You know, I think it was supposed to be 60% cloud cover. And as I said earlier, I had my rain jacket and everything with me because of the forecast. This was actually the most congested part of the towpath. It felt like a weekend in the Cuyahoga Valley around Peninsula and Boston to be expected. You know, we knew we weren't gonna be lighting it up going down the path that we thought there'd be even more crowds out and about. 
And another cool thing to me about deciding to ride all the way up to Cleveland was the idea that we kind of got to see people and what they were doing along the way. So earlier when we were going through the park past some of the trailheads, we saw some people, you know, starting to set up tripods and stuff like that. We were surprised though, every uh, trailhead we had passed so far still had parking spots available. I just really thought people were going to be like, camped out you know the park had put out warnings and all this kind of thing it just didn't turn out to be quite the crowds i expected it was kind of just like i said a normal weekend on the towpath and for this kind of weather maybe even a little less they've just put in a new visitor center down here in boston which is really cool a lot of people buzzing around here today it's actually a bridge over there across the river so this whole area has kind of become the hub for the national park it never really had like a centralized location like a lot of parks do so this is really giving it that feel and it's a pretty cool addition down here we didn't stop on this day though because we had just been taking our break at that coffee shop in peninsula definitely a place to go back and check out in the future this guy's yelling over his phone bluetooth about how the parking lots are a little crowded oh really <laughs> did he really not know what was going on today <laughs> So coming up here on Station Road's trailhead, there had been like unclear information of whether the towpath was closed or not. They're doing some bank stabilization and they're paving certain parts of it where it always floods out. I thought we might have to go up some big hills and make a detour, but they left it open because uh, I'm assuming because of the eclipse day, just a busy day down here. We did come over the old bridge and stop at the restrooms. Also, I took off my base layer here and the big joke was, everybody put on your eclipse glasses. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is some skin that has not seen the sun in a long time. It's kind of interesting too, we had no urgency about us. We were just really enjoying a day out on the towpath. If you've watched my other videos, you know I've just been a little bit like grumpy with the grayness and the weather we've had lately. So this long bike ride up to Cleveland with my friends in the sun was exactly what I needed not even taking in consideration what was about to happen. So you can see here, this is where the towpath construction is going on. There's a great blue heron. There were definitely puddles. You know, we were, you know, getting a little bit damp. Some of us had the fenders and all that stuff, but no big deal. The towpath was still packed uh, very nicely. It's very different when the towpath freezes overnight than thaws, it becomes a real pain to ride. Even though it had been raining though, it wasn't really that bad because it just kind of runs off more in those cases. So another big trailhead here, and again, we're all just kind of commenting on like, where is everybody? And I really think all the hype about the traffic and gridlock and everything started to get through to people and the fact that pretty much everywhere was having an event. So I think people either, you know, some people obviously still had to work and stepped outside. You know, I talked to the guy at the drive through across the street about that. I think a lot of people decided to go to their local events and it just kind of kept the traffic and crowds down. I have heard that there were a lot of out of town people here, but it just wasn't that crush that was so hyped and and even where we could start to see the bridges for the different freeways were like there's no gridlock there's not much happening aaron had mentioned his wife was going to drive up to tremont and then meet us and i was like i wouldn't do that she'll never get out of here my attitude about all that had really started to change the couple days before just seeing posts from people i know about the last eclipse and someone being like i was in the middle of idaho and i was stuck in traffic for 12 hours or you know i had to watch the eclipse from the freeway and just jump out of my car because i was never able to get where i was going so i started to buy into the crush of people hype and the people traveling here by the tens of thousands that had been perpetuated non-stop in the media leading up to this but it's really this point where our attitude started to change about that aspect. Surprisingly quiet here. It is surprisingly quiet. I don't know if that means that everybody's downtown or no one's downtown. Yeah. So as mentioned, we really didn't have a destination. In my mind, I was thinking it'd be cool to get photos of everyone kind of 
in their glasses, looking up at the sky. I was picturing public square at the same time. Like I was saying, originally I thought there was going to be like crowd control and all this stuff. Cause it'd be so wild. Um, so I'm like, I don't even know if we'll do that. Maybe we'll end up watching it from a bar patio. Who knows what we're going to do. Can we even get into any bars? Are those going to be so packed? I have to say though, always in the back of my mind was the idea of the old coast guard station. It's one of my favorite places anywhere, but I just didn't think it was realistic that we could get out there. My attitude started to change around here, uh, seeing this next trailhead also not be that crowded. The last big trailhead before Cleveland and there's almost no cars. I'm starting to think it was overhyped. Or everyone stayed home because it was so hyped. So I just have to say, this is one of those days where everything just kept falling into place. Like everything was working out. And I don't mean this to like gloat, no matter where you watch the eclipse from, it would have been amazing. I would have watched it standing outside my studio and seeing what my area looked like with the eclipse, you know? So we were supposed to meet Aaron's wife, Kat, somewhere around here. Uh, we had stopped there, we put on our glasses, it's about when it was supposed to start, but you couldn't really see anything showing up yet, like you couldn't see anything in the path of the moon. But anyways, we had accidentally passed her in the other direction where she got on the trail. And even this though, where we decided to wait and meet for her, is this really cool viewpoint over the industrial valley. You could start to see the eclipse happening with the glasses on. What do you want to do during totality? Tongue kiss? Yeah. Show me how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so up here we started to talk to other people. We took turns taking group photos, you know, holding other people's phones, them doing it for us. So just like, again, just one of these things that was so great. Everyone's in a good mood. Everyone's off work. I think these first two were for, from Columbus area. But yeah, we hung out here for a little bit, watched a little bit of the eclipse, and then we started to head down into the flats. As you can see, lots of apartments here, and now everyone is coming out and getting ready, you know, sitting around and staring at the sky with their glasses on. And this is when I first started mentioning the Coast Guard station. Like I said, it was always in the back of my mind, but now I believe that we might be able to actually get out there because none of us really wanted to be packed in somewhere like sardines <laughs> or anything, you know, like no one really does. And that was kind of the point of being on our bikes. You know, bikes, we were figuring if everything was a mess, we would be able to get around. If we went somewhere and it was uncomfortable, we could ride away and not be stuck. But you could see here the bridges, well, maybe you can see, but they're not packed with traffic or anything like that. And that's Cleveland there in the background. Even this beautiful viewpoint, I just would have thought people would be like lying down the fence and everything. I just have to say again, this is why I love bikes so much. We would have ended up seeing all this this day. We would have ended up all together and out in the sun all day if it wasn't for bikes and the idea that when we started to make this plan, everyone's like, oh yeah, I want to ride bikes all day. So I don't know. I just love it. We wouldn't have got to where we were trying to go without bikes, um, or trying to go where I was trying to go in the back of my mind, you know, so I wouldn't have attempted to drive to Cleveland or anything like that. You know, maybe I would have just popped outside the studio and worked all day. I had a ton of stuff to do. Maybe I would have just went, you know, to one of the downtowns, Kyle Falls or Akron or one of the events at the art museum or something like that. But bikes got us out and we got to enjoy the whole day together and actually, you know, doing something cool like this, all the bridges through the flats that we're going over now. When we come across here, I actually messed up and got us off the path of the towpath. But I know this sounds like I'm just justifying something, but I'm even glad this happened because we ended up going through the flats here and past all the bars. And again, just got to see what was going on. I think we're um, a little more than half hour out on totality here. So we did decide to stop and like talk. I'm like, what does everyone want to do? Because we hadn't really talked about it. Do you want to go up to Public Square and see everybody or see what everyone's what's happening in downtown Cleveland? Uh, public Square is the center, you know, kind of big public space or the old Coast Guard station and everyone's like old Coast Guard station. So that's where we headed. And even again, with everything working out, this bridge right here has been closed for years and you usually have to detour way around. It's finally open. I mean, it's not like it opened yesterday, but just again, in my mind, one of those things that was just lining up perfectly for us on this awesome day. And again, none of this is to gloat or say we did it better or if you didn't know about how cool totality would be and you didn't drive somewhere to see it because I didn't know. We didn't, like I said, last minute plans. Um, 
almost no plans and things just working out for us. Uh, I'm just lucky. If I had been just close and not there, I probably wouldn't have done anything about it. So it's just, you know, almost happenstance. <laughs> Anyways, this bridge here is really weird. A lot of people dislike it. It's this single lane you have to go over. If you see people like we were just on the bridge and those other people, you can't get over there because it's actually fenced in to cross over to Wendy Park and the old Coast Guard station. And the next bridge over there is pretty new. Oh, yeah. You used to have to go way out of your way down the river and around through Edgewater to get to Wendy Park and the old Coast Guard station. When they put the bridge in, it actually kind of bummed me out because the Coast Guard station is so special to me and I felt like it being harder to get to, you know, just made it more exclusive. It's way better, obviously, that anyone could get there way easier. Um, I'm not that much of a gatekeeper, but it is just a cool place. And so it did used to feel a little bit more like our own. But again, you could see here, this is Wendy Park. People are out and people are ready for it, but it's not wall to wall or anything like that. Joy Machine's bike shop used to actually have their cyclocross race, the heck of the north on Wendy Island there. So here we are heading out to the pier and I just kind of wanted to see like, are we going to be able to get out there? Um, and we were. And then even when we got to the old Coast Guard station, there's like an extended pier past there and I wasn't sure we'd be able to get out there. And we went out there and hung out there and talked to a couple real characters. People, you know, as always shocked that you've ridden your bike so far and all that type of thing. Is it pretty crowded out there? Uh, not too bad. I think you can see why this is a special place. This is also the mouth of the Cuyahoga, the port of Cleveland's on the other side. The views of Cleveland from over here are really cool. Uh, the boats and the ships and all that stuff are always passing by. There's always a group of people fishing out here every time I've ever been out here. Today you can see it's a mix of kind of your regulars and then uh, the Eclipse watchers like us. You can see the old Coast Guard station in the back there. It's kind of an Art Deco style one. This guy, I captured a lot of audio that we're talking to. He was hilarious and probably some clips that I'll be able to use for some other stuff down the road. So nothing really changes till maybe more than 90% of the sun is covered, which it is here. You just can't tell because it's still so bright. Any amount of sun rays, you can't look at it. And then totality. Hell yeah, it's a 360 degree sunset. Nothing can really prepare you for what it looks like. Um, you've seen photos, you've seen everyone's videos. To be there, it just is amazing. Everybody <laughs> was buzzing. Everybody is kind of clapping or cheering or whispering while the sun's gone. This was a special eclipse too because it was one of the longer amounts of totality. And riding our bikes from Akron to Cleveland was nice because it put us a little closer to the center line. So I can't remember the difference. Maybe someone else could write in the comments. I think we got like 30 seconds more of it. For me at first, I was just, you know, looking up there in amazement like everybody else. And I was thinking of the advice some people had said, like, you know, just enjoy the moment. Pulled my camera out, snapped a couple photos of close-ups of like 200 millimeters close-up. There's no close-up of the sun at 200 millimeters, but close as I could get to just having that in my view. But then after like, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds, I realized I enjoy things by trying to capture them. So then I walked around a little, took some photos of what it looked like. I don't know. Talk about that all in a little bit more. We, the three of us, Ben and me and Aaron, decided to go to Masthead Brewing to get some, I don't know, late lunch, dinner, whatever it would be at this point, and have a couple beers. Uh, Brad and Ames were running over to her sisters in Lakewood to hang out for a bit, and we were going to try and meet up later. And then Aaron and Kat were going to go get some different food, and since she drove up there, they were going to ride home together. So here we are just heading through downtown Cleveland to get to where we're going to eat. The other amazing thing is it's opening day for the Cleveland Guardians, the baseball team. And still, I mean, I'm sure it's already cleared out a little bit by here. I mean, the eclipse is still going on, the partial eclipse here. But I'm sure, you know, after totality and a little bit, it's just 
I don't know, a partial eclipse doesn't seem like a big deal at all after that point, you know? <laughs> it's more the lead up, but. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Keep rapping. Okay. Where? Get on your bicycle. So Brad and Ames met us there, but we were already kind of ready to roll. We had already had a couple beers and our pizzas and all that. So we were like, maybe you guys will end up meeting us down the trail because they could move a little bit faster probably than we would. So we also bought a four pack for the road. So, you know, have a beer somewhere out on the trail in the sun and then meet up with them later. So again, heading back through Cleveland, we went right by the stadium. And again, there was a lot of people going to the game, but at this point, it didn't seem like an unusual day, just except for the vibe that everybody was in, like such a good mood. You know, still like days later, scrolling social media and just everybody how, talking about how absolutely it was beyond expectations. And I don't know, uh, Eclipse High, everyone saying lasts a few days for sure. It's also one thing I've always loved about photography is when I do something that's interesting or unique, take a trip, whatever it may be. When I edit my photos, it brings me back to that place and brings back all those memories for me. So it's one of the things I've always loved even before I did it professionally. It's why I kept a daily uh, blog for so long. And same thing with these YouTube videos. You know, it's Friday as I'm recording this and now I'm just almost feeling that, you know, excitement again from the whole day. Cause as we were riding out here to like I just mentioned, it's still kind of a high from the excitement. And again, even if we, it wasn't an eclipse day, this would have been awesome just after winter and all that, just getting out. I love the ride to Cleveland through the Valley. It's just a very cool ride. It always is. It just changes a number of ways. And, you know, I don't know, something just, it's always something that is very enjoyable and just I think is really awesome and unique to Northeast Ohio. So stats wise, we were a little bit over 40 miles after we left the brewery and started getting back to the towpath. We ended up with about 80 miles all in all on the day. So awesome day out. I think we got back around nine o'clock at night. So rode back a bit in the dark, maybe a little bit later than that. Right after the eclipse, Aaron was asking the question, would you travel for one? And the next one in the continental United States is in 20 years. If I'm around and able-bodied, healthy, whatever, I would definitely drive to be in totality again. It is just like nothing else. There's nothing else I've ever experienced that's close to it, uh, except the 360 degree sunset, just, you know, the moment the sun disappears and you could take off the glasses and look up and I don't know, you get a sunrise and a sunset, you know, uh, right close to each other it's just there's nothing else like it it's super unique uh flying uh to an eclipse that would happen sooner i don't know i mean it would it would just that would be a little less likely but you would definitely want to you know be packing into a bigger trip you know as a cyclist you know a bike packing trip or something like that i do have some friends you know dylan friend of the channel who did a bike packing trip for this eclipse uh talking to some other people Dave uh, Geller, a friend of the channel too, he said he rode his bike alone and found a cool spot in the woods. Same thing, I, you know, I'm thinking about all that stuff. I'm like, there would be no wrong way to do it. You know, I think of being downtown Akron or the Akron Art Museum's party or downtown Cuyahoga Falls and being around even more people I know. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, just walking outside my door and getting to see what it looked like at my building that I own. There's no wrong way to do it. And yes, I would definitely not miss another one if it meant driving, you know, probably up to 10 hours, probably more. So I don't know, that's just my uh, thoughts after seeing one. And again, just looking at this footage again, looking at everybody else's photos, looking at the people who took the really good ones of these um, these red solar, what are they, prominitions? Uh, of course, I'm gonna say that wrong right now. Everyone at the time thought they were solar flares, but they're not, they're plasma structures that last much longer than flares. Anyways, just, yeah, super unique, super cool, still thinking about it, still watching other YouTube videos about it, watching the news footage of different parts of Cleveland and Akron and everyone's social media. Uh, yeah, I. it's weird for me to be this excited and hyped about something and I still am. So that goes to show what it felt like. And again, I don't mean it to be like a gloat or to be like, hey, we're geniuses for planning this and doing all this stuff right, because that's not how we had done it. Anyways, that's going to about wrap it up for this video. If you want to support what I do here, consider becoming a channel member. There's a little store below. It's running out of some things. I'm not that great at running an online store, it turns out. Memberships, though, are a great way to support what I do here. I would do this anyways. I love doing it. It's a great uh, hobby. It's fulfilling. 
but I do spend way too much time on it, so a little bit of support does go a long way. <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited to get out and do more riding. The weather's finally getting better. Well, it actually sucks this week, but it will be getting better, and so lots more to come. Thanks, as always, for watching. Peace.